Inside episode 31 on Outsourcing Life, you'll find out how to outsource to the Philippines with Filipina-based CEO of Live to Sell Group and owner of Virtual Star Finder. Also, in the Insider Info section, I have a tool that will allow you to track how productive you are whilst you are on the computer anytime automatically. All right, let's roll the music. Want to get tons of leads from YouTube without breaking a sweat? Outsourcing you. This is Outsourcing Live with Tyrone Shum. Outsourcing the hard stuff so you can focus on the fun stuff. Hey there. I'm really excited to be on the next episode of Outsourcing Live because there's just so many great things to share with you. In the last week or so, I've been really, really focused on just cranking out a lot of videos. I actually cranked out almost about 30 videos in about two weeks or so, brand new videos for one of my courses, a specifically outsourcing course on how to better find people in the Philippines, how to better manage them and also how to outsource to a virtual team overseas. So, I've got some brand new videos, really high quality. I'm actually recording everything now in 1080 HD and if you don't know what that means, it just means that you're able to watch it on the full big flat screen TVs if you ever wanted to. I just hope I don't look too big there. But uh, yeah, I, I've been switching over now with the new iMac that my wife bought me for Christmas. I've been cranking out a lot of brand new videos very, very quickly and recording them and then sending them over to my video editor who's been able to do some amazing stuff on it and add some really cool visual effects and so forth. But anyway, that's what's been happening for me. I've been focusing on just doing that and that's been the power of focus because I've said to myself, I'm not going to work on anything else until I finish this course and because of that, instead of working over a six-month period of say doing this course, I've actually focused and managed to crank out everything almost within about two to three weeks. So, I hope in the next week or so, I should be able to fine-tune everything and then relaunch this course out there so that people can check it out and let me know what they think. In addition, I'll probably be posting up some sneak previews or snippets of what's inside the course on one of my channels. So, I'll definitely be announcing that hopefully by the next podcast and to show you exactly what I actually do and what's inside it. So, that way, if you are interested in purchasing this course down the track or wanting to learn more about outsourcing, you actually get first-hand sneak peek of what's actually expected inside this course. And I'm just letting you know everything's going to be of high quality. You know, I don't want to set the expectations but I've made sure that I deliver value to all my customers which includes yourself as well if you become a customer of my courses and I I hope you do anyway. All right, so that's what's been happening with me. I also wanted to give out a few shout outs and also thank yous to the people who've also let some more reviews on the iTunes podcast. It's it's been amazing because I've always been very encouraged and supported to continue to put this podcast together because of all the feedback and the reviews that you continue to leave for me. I am just honored to to do this. So, let me just read out some of the reviews that I've got here from iTunes in the last few weeks. I know I haven't read them out since probably about two or three episodes ago but I thought let me share with you some more of what's been going on there. And for example, the first one that I've got here is from Josh Fret Fantix from Australia. He says here, great podcast. I like that Tyron doesn't claim to be an expert in all areas of internet business. He's an expert in outsourcing. Therefore, he comments on the subject of online business most often. He also has great guests and has a lot of wildly successful Australian and UK guests. So, awesome. Thanks so much for that, Josh. And also too, I've got another review from angelp.v. So, thanks for that. I have been following Tyrone for a while now and I must say everything he teaches and does on Outsourcing Live is incredible. He delivers consistent valuable content on outsourcing and on other content relevant to outsourcing. His latest advice about outsourcing and video marketing and the tips and tricks he has up his sleeve are very helpful. I also really enjoy his teaching style as it resonates with me and love learning from him. I definitely recommend listening to his podcast. Thank you, Tyrone and a nice big smile. So, thank you so much for that, Angel. Really, really appreciate you leaving an amazing review and also five-star rating as well. And I I guess, yeah, everyone who hasn't left a review or if you haven't left a review on iTunes and you love this podcast, then please do so. And I really love the feedback that you give me because it helps me to continue to provide really good content and to support all the people listening on this podcast. 
Now, if you want to leave a review, all you have to do is go to outsourcinglive.com forward slash leave dash review. It's pretty easy. So it's just outsourcinglive.com forward slash leave dash review. And I'll make sure that I'll put down a link down the bottom of this episode, which is episode 31. So it'd be if you want to just check it out on the blog, it's outsourcinglive.com forward slash episode 31. All right, so that's pretty much the reviews and that's what I've been up to in the last week or two and I'll definitely keep you up to date on what's going on in the next podcast and hopefully I'll be able to share with you some more exciting news, not just yet but I I will let you know what this course is all about anyway. All right, next thing is I wanted to jump into and share with you a interview that I did with the CEO, a Filipino CEO of Live to Sell Group and also Virtual Star Finder. And as you may or may not know, if you've been hearing all my previous podcasts, I have talked a lot about and recommended people to go and check out Virtual Star Finder, which is owned by the CEO, which his name is Chris Ducker. And he's Filipino based, which means that he lives in the Philippines in Cebu and he does manage and run over 300 people in his staff. So he's a very, very well-known outsourcing expert in that arena and he has a lot of staff with over 10 years worth of experience there. So that's the reason why I wanted to get him on the call because not only to just share from my outsourcing experience but we can collaborate on his experience as well and put it together and get him to share a little bit more about in depth on how to be able to outsource to the Philippines. So let's roll straight into it and hear from Chris. Howdy. Hi, Chris. <laughs> now, for the people who are listening to this on a podcast, we're also doing a video interview. So, you can go and check it out on YouTube as well to see both us live having a nice sunny day actually. I think Chris has got a sunny day and I've got one too. So, it's good. <laughs> it is. It's pretty good over here in the Philippines today. You're not going to hear me moan about it. <laughs> so, what's been happening for you, Chris, with Virtual Star Finder? And it's, I should say, it's early 2012, January 2012 right now. What's been happening with you and that? Well, you know, we started the company off, as you are well aware, um, in the middle of uh, 2010. It was kind of, it was a soft launch. We didn't make any big announcements about it. We just sort of started helping people out mm. in, in regards to finding their, you know, their home-based VAs over here. And um, it, really, it really kind of started to pick up some serious traction uh, beginning of 2011. And last year was just an unbelievable year for us. We ended up actually on the year where I believe it was almost 360 virtual assistants placed throughout the course of the year wow. uh, with busy entrepreneurs from literally all around the world. I mean, you name it, you know, the US, UK, Australia, South Africa, Germany, Everyone France, I mean, meetings. Li- literally <laughs> from all around the world. Yeah, it was, it was an unbelievable year for the company, actually. And this year, so far in January, we'll, you know, we're recording this uh, 13th of January, and um, I think we're already up to about 23 or 24 VAs already hired this month. So it's, it's really taken off. The service was, was obviously required, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. There was a huge demand for it. And personally, I wasn't going to go down that path to set one up, as I mentioned to you, and I said, it would be great if I could just find a person to do that. And I said, all right, perfect. Chris is doing it. He's got a team already backing behind him. I mean, you've already got a company that's in there that is called Live to Sell, which you already have, what, over 300 staff there. You've got the infrastructure. You've got the people. You may as well just branch off into this area. And I thought, that's perfect. I can always refer people because people are always asking me. So, for the people who are listening to this on this podcast, it's kind of the perfect thing. But I didn't want to get Chris on the call to start selling virtual staff wine. That was not the reason behind this call. Pitch, pitch the damn service. Everybody sign up now before you, you know. You may uh, as well I do mean, that. I, you can click on the link straight below and start. That's it. End the podcast. It's that's over it. and done. No, I, but, but you know what though? Honestly speaking, I don't even, and I know that I'm the owner of the company and yada, 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 but frankly speaking, I don't think we need to pitch the service. I think you either know whether you need the virtual help and support or not. And, you know, a lot of people come to us after they've been down the Odesk and Elance route and it hasn't worked out for them. Because, and I'm, you know, I use them purely as examples. The job sites are what they are. They're not going to go anywhere anytime soon in this industry. That's for sure. But the fact of the matter is, nine times out of ten, the reason why entrepreneurs are looking for virtual assistants of any type, any shape or form, is because they're busy and they need help. 
and they need support. And because of that, why would they want to, you know, waste valuable time, energy, and effort going through all those resumes, doing all those interviews, and all those background mm. checks, and all the rest of it? It just makes entrepreneurial sense to utilize a company such as ours that has, like you said, the infrastructure, the experience, and generally just all their ducks in a row already. And it takes out a lot of the guesswork. And that's the one thing that people say after they're done with our service, when they're done using it, it's like, you know, there's so many things that could have gone wrong if I'd have done it on my own. But the fact of the matter is I avoided all of that by going through you guys. So it's it's a great service. I mean, I'm not pitching it. I don't I think it say, needs that's a nice pitch. Well, we better stop yeah. there now, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. pitching it. It doesn't need yeah. to be pitched in any it, way. It sells shape itself. Or I mean, that's the reason why I recommend it because one, I've used it personally, and two, a lot of the people who I refer through to Chris has used it and said that they've received amazing feedback from it. And you know, it, it just goes to show. I don't need to go and say to people, "You need to use this service." Just go and check it out. If it's suitable for you, you know, go for it. But I guess what I wanted to do was to take this call and sort of de- debrief or actually break down exactly what virtual staff finder service can do for my audience and also my listeners because I get this question all the time, Tyrone, I've been to Elance, I've been trying this at bestjobs.ph, trying to find the people. Why is it so hard to find that right person? And even when I have found that person, they're willing to start hired to work with me, they just haven't worked out. So what I want to do is ask Chris right now for you to explain how this service helps with firstly filtering the process of finding the right people and then secondly making your life or their lives a lot easier when they find that right person. Well, I think, you know, to answer the initial question in, that people are asking you a lot, a, a lot of the time is, I've done this, it hasn't worked out, why? You know, why aren't things working out for me? And a lot of the time, I can put it down to mostly down to cultural differences right off the bat because Filipinos and Westerners are obviously from two completely different worlds. Mm. And the Filipino is educated is raised with that employee mindset. There aren't too many entrepreneurs in the Philippines. And so they are, they're raised and they're educated with the mindset of, of one day I'm going to work for somebody. Mm. And if I'm going to work for someone, I want to please them. I want to make them happy. I want to do a great job, be loyal, be trustworthy, and all that stuff. But that's their mentality. That's what they're about. Whereas the expats, as we call them here in the Philippines, or the foreigners, or the Westerners, whatever you want to call us, <laughs> those, you know, we do have a lot more of an entrepreneurial tendency about us. And we, I say it all the time, entrepreneurs are a very weird, strange breed. I mean, we're That could be you. That could be you, man. I, I'm not, not part of that breed. <laughs> oh, yes, you I'm, are. I'm pretty, you- I'm pretty normal. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. You might try and kid yourself, my man, but trust me, you're weird just like the rest of us. Because here's, here's the I don't thing. don't want to be part of that pile, man. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. And I say it with the greatest of respect to each and every single entrepreneur in the world, myself and yourself included. We have what I call superhero syndrome. We believe that we are bigger, better, and more powerful, and we can do everything better than anyone else in the entire universe. And that is where we have problems. So the major difference between what a Western entrepreneur can do on their own in regards to using Elance or Odesk or Freelancer or one of the other freelance job sites out there and what you can do by utilizing Virtual Star Finder is that with Virtual Star Finder, like I said you know, at the top of the call, a lot of the guesswork is taken out of it even before it's begun because what you'll do is you'll get run through your post your job You'll go through all of the you know the questioning and you'll interview people. You try this and is do through you. We're talking about now, or we're talking about no, no, just no, this, going through, through Elance or Elance okay. or one of the other job sites. So through one of the job sites, you'll post your job. You'll receive all those you know inquiries back. You'll go through all those resumes, not really knowing what you should look for because nine times out of ten, you haven't hired a Filipino before, um, and. Generally, you know, you might try and do some background checks and all the rest of it. That's what you'll do on your own. You'll pick someone. Sometimes it'll work out. Sometimes it'll, it will not work out. Whereas with Virtual Staff Finder, we're here. We're in the country. 
I have a team of about 10 people working now on Virtual Starfinder. It's amazing to think when we started it off, we only had me and one other person on it. Which was Stephanie. Now, you're you're, you're is, right, yes. And I, I've been, I've been right. working with Stephanie for quite some time now. So. <laughs> yeah. And Steph is great, and she's our project manager, and I, I certainly have other things planned for her for the future. But the fact of the matter is, is that you know, we now have a team of nine or ten people working full-time on the service, and what they do is they will, based on your requirements, so the first thing you do when you sign up is that Stephanie will send out or one of the other girls will send out a job description document. You'll complete that job description and you'll send it back to us. And that's your time to tell us what you want. Just like posting a job ad on one of the job sites. That's your time to tell us what you need your virtual assistant to be doing, whether it be a general VA or a web developer or a writer or an SEO person, whatever the case may be. We take that job description, we stick it into our database or database, as you guys down under would say, and <laughs> come on, get a right. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we stick that into the database, and we go through that, and we pull out all of the applicants that we have that match your requirements. Mm. We then start calling them. We do voice to voice over the telephone interviews with them initially. If they pass those interviews, they then go through a personality and IQ test, which is done online. And you get all these results. You get everything emailed to you, along with their resumes and all the rest of it. But then we go one step further. And this is 99.9% .9 of the time, this is where the people who try to do this on their own go wrong. They don't check references properly. That's the deal breaker. That's the deal breaker. And because we're here and we can do it very easily by picking up the landline and calling ex-employers or ex-teachers even. We even call the university sometimes and things like that as well. We can do that. We have the infrastructure here. I would say 40 to 50% of the applicants drop off the list right there. They just don't cut it right there. So that then squeezes down that pool of talent even further. Eventually, we'll go through a couple of other interviews. And to cut a long story short, we then present three qualified candidates to you as the client who will then interview them, usually via Skype. You pick the one that you like the sound of the most, and you get to work. It takes out almost all of the guessing work possible. I mean, there's always going to be that tiny little bit of guess work that's still left over because you're dealing with a human element. It is what it is. But for all intents and purposes, we've done all of that hard work. And that's, what, that's really what people are paying for. Above them. They're not paying to find the virtual assistant. They're paying to not have the headaches of doing all that stuff for themselves. That's e what it is. Exactly. Actually, I was going to say, you've got to ask yourself this question. This is for the listeners is how much time is your time worth really? If you spend all those hours going out find that person, making sure, doing all the reference checks and stuff like that, if you do find the right person, great. You know, I'm really happy for you. But if you don't, then you got to go through this whole process again twice, three times, four times. And I've heard yeah. stories. I've had team members and also students come back to me and said, this is the fifth person. I said, well, I, you know, I don't know what's going on but definitely go and speak to Chris and Chris will help you sort this out because more than likely, they'll find the right person for you because they're yeah. on, on ground. And I think that makes the biggest difference between a lot of the companies. I know that there are companies in Australia that do this. There are companies in the US that does this. And they say that they do have teams in the Philippines that also go through this process and filter and, and so forth. But nothing beats being directly having a source in there that can find out and make sure and deliver it to you because ultimately you are looking for a Filipino if that's what you're looking for to hire. Well, and the other thing is, and this is where I'm going to sing my praises just a little bit here. And I don't, I don't usually ego bash my own self, but I'm. Hold on, let me just here. cut this out, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, here, here, here's the thing. You know, I've lived in the Philippines 11 years. I don't know anybody else in this industry, in the entire outsourcing industry, that can claim that. And I've trained probably in access now. I would have thought around 10,000 Filipinos, and that's no exaggeration. Mm, in a, I believe it's true tasks and roles, right? So the, the thing is this, I know what makes them tick. And I think from a Westerner standpoint, being here, working with the Filipinos to find other Filipinos for Western entrepreneurs, there's no one else that can really facilitate that. I mean, 10 years, you know, 11 years in the country, 10 years in the outsourcing industry. Believe me, I've 
seen it all. I mean, I just, well, actually, if you guys are watching well, on us on the video, you can just see from Chris's face. So I don't need to say. <laughs> And, and the lack of hair on my head as well. Don't, Sorry, don't Chris, I, I couldn't help say that because you're talking about it before with me. So. Yeah, yeah. No, we so, like no, to have but, fun. We like to have fun. That's, but that's what it's about. You know, it, it's, it's just about really trying to break the entire process mm. down as much as possible. And, you know, a lot of the time we get, I, even now, even with Live to Sell, which is my, my, uh, my, my uh, call center company, which is the largest company I own, mm. you know, I still get people emailing and calling and saying, I've seen Chris's blog or I've listened to Chris's podcast. So just from that kind of, um, I guess that kind of preconceived expert status, if you want to call it, people already have a little bit of the, uh, a little bit of the doubt is already removed from the entire process. It's sort of you know already, I mean? you're, you're receiving basically warm leads because at the end of the day, they've firstly seen you on your blog, they've seen your videos, they've kind of already know who you are already without even speaking to you. Right, And I, right. I mean, I get this all the time. People, it's funny, the other day I was walking down the street oh, yeah. and then they just said, hey, Tyrone, oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry, I don't unfortunately know who you are but they said, yeah, I've been following you, yada, yada, yada. And it's that same principle, it just breaks down that whole skepticism and also fear because when you are real on online people see who you are and then when they actually talk to you like how we're talking right now in right. actual fact they realize oh it's actually not as scary as it seems they're just presenting who they really are and then want to be able to buy into i guess whatever services you offer which is exactly right. what we're and that that right there is a business lesson in its own mm. you know because people mm. like to do business with other people they don't necessarily want to do business with a company they want to do business with the person who owns the company or manages the company. So, you know, like yourself and myself, we do a lot of video online and things like that. People automatically um, kind of have that relationship with you because you've opened yourself up in a visual format. Um, you know, perfect story to, to tell, to prove this point very, very right is last year when I spoke at um, Blogworld on the subject of virtual assistants, I was in the Starbucks, which is in the LA Convention Center there, and I was getting myself a coffee one morning. Somebody came up to me and they said to me, and this is no BS, I swear, my wife was with me, so there's a witness there, right? <laughs> Got um, a witness, yes. This, this, this lady came up to me and she said, Chris, I just wanted to come and introduce myself to you. I've been listening to your podcast and you know, reading your blog for about a year or so now. Your stuff on outsourcing has completely changed my life, and you're actually one of the main reasons why I came to Blog World because I wanted to hear you speak live about it. And I was just like, my jaw hit the floor because I've never had anybody come up to me in public and say that sort of stuff. And it was so cool. It was next to my wife. I hope your wife wasn't thinking the same thing going, man, <laughs> wish I, I should be the one saying that. Uh, she's cool. <laughs> she doesn't she's cool get jealous. It. But, you know, it, it, that, that right there is the perfect example. People want to do business with other people. And mm. I think particularly online, with online entrepreneurs, they forget about that. They think all they need is their blog and, and a buy now button, but it's not that. Yeah, it's, it's not it's that anymore, that. which is really good to be able to talk into. Okay, well, let's just sort of take us back because we, we, we kind of got sidetracked. We'll talk Digress. a little bit more about you know, business now. We're talking about that. But I think what I think people want to know as well is this is a common question is once I've gone through your service, Chris, what do I do after that? Uh, do I, yeah, where, where do I start after you found that person? That's a big question they always ask. Well, a lot of, you know, the, the answer to that will a lot of the time depend on the type of person that you've hired. Okay. Well, um, let's say a VA to make it simple. <laughs> a, a general VA. So, a general VA will do things such as your online research, your keyword research if you're into niche site creations and things like that. They'll manage your social media, maybe do all of your YouTube and podcast uploading for you. They can manage your blog and they can draft all the blog posts and everything because that's pretty time-consuming stuff. Yes. And you can then just go in, give it the once-over, hit that publish button and all that sort of time-consuming stuff. Work that I call busy work. You know, It's work that really, as a business owner, if you can get someone else to do that for you, it's never going to be a bad thing because with that busy work to one side, you can then focus on the things that are really important to your business such as spending more time with clients, marketing to find more clients, mm. putting growth strategies in place, expansion ideas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So your general VA is really your right-hand man, but virtually. And people always say to me, what is a virtual assistant? And I say, well, they're just like a personal assistant 
except for the fact that they can't pick up the dry cleaning and make a cups of coffee all day. <laughs> Unless you want to get it sent over by post. Right. You'll be waiting for a few weeks. <laughs> I'm not sure whether FedEx is ready to ship a cup of coffee yet. I'm, I, we can always <laughs> ask, but I'm not sure they are. So, they are, that, that will be the day that transportation or teleportation is already in. So, I can't wait to see that day. <laughs> but no, so yeah. you, the first thing you do after you hire your, your general VA is really, I mean, and, you know, you've got to start training. I yeah. mean, a lot of people think that outsourcing is this magic pill that you can pop and everything's going to work perfectly from day one. Mm. If you think that, you're in la-la land. It ain't going to work like that in the real world. I'm glad you're so saying why should that. it work like yeah. that in the virtual world, right? So you've got to spend a little bit of time training. Obviously, if you've hired the right person, particularly through Virtual Star Finder, there'll be a, a number of items that have already been ticked off that you know that they understand or they've got experience in or they're willing to learn or whatever the case may be. So that kind of makes that transition period a little bit shorter. But generally speaking, I say a four to six week period is a good kind of honeymoon period, as I call it, for your, your, your general VA to really start understanding how you like things done, um, the way you like things presented, how you're going to be presenting tasks to your VA and things like that as well. So your training period isn't necessarily going to be focused on how to do ABC, but more focused on this is how I like ABC to be done. Because a lot of the general VAs will have a very clear understanding of how to update the Facebook page mm. or, or how to present a spreadsheet full of research to you. But they might not know that you want that spreadsheet to have you know, blue and red colors and to have aerial font type you know, size 12. So, and, it's more and like the personalization of everything that you do. To put your personalized touch depending on what it is, if you're blogging, if you're running your own business, there's always going to be the branding behind it which you've got to inject into it. Absolutely, absolutely. Perfect example is when I hired um, a VA recently, uh, I, have, I have two full-time VAs that have been with me for a couple of years now that don't work for my company. They work outside of my company's facilities over in Manila. Okay. As you know, we're based down here in the south in Cebu. Uh, for everybody watching and listening, that's around about an hour plane ride away from Manila, which is the capital of the country. But Cebu is actually the fastest growing economic zone in the country and has been for the last three to four years. But we digress. Fact of the matter is, I just hired somebody about six months ago, which is my, my part-time VA, um, who actually works for another virtual staff finder client for the other half of the week. But... Um, what she does for me is she actually manages my blog for me. So she'll go out and she'll find images to use under Creative Commons and, and all the rest of it so we don't get into copyright issues. Um, she'll draft all of my posts. I haven't actually written a blog post for over six months. I dictate everything. And then I send the uh, audio file into the Dropbox folder that we share. She gets it, transcribes the blog post, tweaks it, edits it a little bit. And she was actually a, uh, the reason why I hired her is because she's got a writing background as well. Uh, and she can kind of edit that content a little bit to kind of take out the errs and the arms and the stutters and things like that when you dictate. Um, and she then puts it all there. Now, here's the one thing. If you look at my blog, virtualbusinesslifestyle.com, you'll see that the last paragraph of every post is short, it's sweet, it usually has either an action item required from the reader or at least a question for them to reply to in the comments section. Yep. And always that last paragraph is in bold and italics just to make it stand out a little bit. So that was one of the things that she didn't get the first few blog posts. She didn't see it on her own. So I had to tell her last yep. paragraph it's part of training. always. Yep. It's always blah, 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 blah. So that's really the first thing that you do is kind of spend some time with your VA, teaching them how you like things done, how you want things presented, um, and generally that will enable you to go into that second month of working with each other um, with a much kind of nicer footing, a much nicer grounding mm -hmm. where she can really start or he can really start getting to work for you. Yep. So Chris, because you're in the Philippines, you're able to talk to, say, this virtual staff or this, your, your uh, part-time VA, do you, are you talking to her physically or are you communicating via email or Skype or that kind of stuff? 
Skype is used, but usually just for uh, messaging. I don't, I don't actually pick up and speak to my VAs now very often at all. Okay. I did in the first month or so. You yep. spend at least 15, 20 minutes a day with them, just going over the work that they've done, giving them a pat on the back for the stuff that they've yep, done well excellent. and critiquing them a little bit for the stuff that they didn't do so well. But everybody learns by you know, making mistakes and, and bettering themselves all the time. And Filipino virtual assistants are no different. Exactly. So I, I do that. And I usually, because I'm here, I have that luxury of being able to get on an aeroplane and being in Manila in an hour. So I do, I tend to go over and spend usually a full day with my VAs as a group so they can all get to know each other as well. And that way I'm not repeating myself all the time. Exactly, all at once. I just want to emphasize just for the listeners, something that is really, really important and Chris really emphasized it here but I want to re-emphasize it again which I really think it's good is that he compliments his VAs and I think a lot of people don't do enough of that. So, compliment, make sure you compliment your VAs but also when you are giving them critical feedback, give it in a, in a nice way but at the same time be stern with it so that they can understand otherwise they won't learn what to do then compliment them again which you know, it builds up that good relationship with them and I found that in the past, a lot of people who haven't been able to succeed, successfully keep a virtual assistant is because they just keep pounding them with work and then just criticize them and stuff and they just, you know, it can be demoralizing and especially when it's virtual, it's so easy just to send the task off without saying thank you or encouraging them saying this is a great work because I know personally when I work with my virtual assistant, every time I compliment them, her <laughs> productivity just skyrockets. And she's probably and every, going to be listening every, to this podcast right now and transcribing it for me too, <laughs> which is great because that's exactly, every, yeah. Everybody likes to get a compliment, right? If we dress up nicely, we want someone to say, man, you look great today. Or, you know, and, and for all the husbands out there, you say that every day anyway to your wife regardless of what she looks like. <laughs> so, you know, your wife will always want that compliment every single yeah. day. No, but it... it from a working environment, because you don't have the ability to kind of see, feel, and touch your virtual employee in the flesh, it's hang on, that sounded wrong. Touch your VA in the flesh. Sorry, I apologize. I was going to um, say something, but you said it. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, you don't have that ability to sit there face to face. Yes, that's in right. The same room. In the same and because room. of that, a lot of things can get lost in translation, particularly via email. So, um, yeah, I, I use Skype a little bit. Uh, I use email daily, um, and I do go and see them. I usually pop over to Manila about once every quarter at the end of each quarter, and I, I get together with them, and we go out, and you know, we'll do some bowling, or I'll take them to the movies, and we'll have dinner, and usually when I'm there, I get a little... <laughs> have a little emotional. bit of a drink and then just no, you know no, no no nothing like that I, I i get a little emotional I, I usually end up taking them out and you know maybe if it's a girl you know buying them a nice blouse or a pair of jeans or something if it's a guy i'll hook the guy up with a pair of sneakers or something like that why i just i can't clothing chris why does it have to be clothing <laughs> well hey you don't understand man filipinos they love their clothing they love it sounds like it, it get. It's very similar to like the Asian countries in Hong Kong. It's very much like that as well too. They love their dresses. They love their clothes. Yeah. Oh yeah. It must be an Asian and, thing. And, <laughs> but it's also it's it's the act of taking them mm. out and buying them something, something with yeah. them, letting them choose what they want as well. That doesn't happen very often, no. particularly with a virtual boss. So they really appreciate that. Which is great, and that's that's really really good tips. And that's that's why I wanted to ask you those questions because. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't get to see it and if they're all virtual, it's very hard to really know what's going on and you know, make the most out of it when you've got to communicate via Skype and also email and so forth. What I wanted to ask you next was to find out more about managing them because we've talked about training, we've talked about communication with their staff. Is there a system that you run through with them? Is there something that you communicate with them? Like, as I know a lot of people use Basecamp, HQ, a lot of people have been using different project management systems. Is there something like that that you recommend as well? Well, I think the first and foremost thing when it comes to managing it is it, it also goes back to task delegation and the way that you give your tasks out because you'll genuinely find that it's easier to manage virtual staff if you give them one task at a time. Yep. instead of loading them with a ton of tasks. Now, you will have what I call revolving tasks that they'll do either every day or three times a week or whatever, and that doesn't count. When I say a task, I mean a task which is a one-off task. So, you know, I'm going to write 
I'm going to write a uh, you know 1,000 word blog post blog on post. the subject of skydiving. Go and find out some information in regards to skydiving. Why skydiving? I only just did that no. for my 30th just then. <laughs> I know. I saw the video. And you're mad. I would never do that shit ever. I'd do it again for, for sure. It's the best experience ever. <laughs> I, it, okay, let me. Look, we're going to digress again, but let me break. <laughs> That's okay. Down, okay. This is why I will never, ever skydive, okay? Let me just bring it down to the bare essentials. You are jumping out of an aeroplane, jumping out. 14,000 feet as well. <laughs> right? At 14, 15,000 feet with nothing but an oversized silk handkerchief between you and your certain death. Sort of parachute, Chris. Parachute. <laughs> Can't do it. You're, you're a bigger man than me ever. And bungee jumping. What would you want to do that for? Now, Jump see, off a bridge bungee jumping I won't do because the fact is, is that it can break your back. I've seen and heard stories from my closest friends and unfortunately, yes, that's why. But the thing is when I did skydiving, the whole of, oh, not whole, but one other person in my mastermind group decided to do it because I'm in a mastermind group on a, on a, a weekly basis and I, I told them about that and they said one of the things they've wanted to do for so long is skydiving. So, it was like enticing for them and they went and did it just last week. <laughs> so it's it, I guess we're young you know you gotta live it and that's one of, that's one of my bucket list things that I said I'd be doing and I've definitely done it now since I'm okay. to <laughs> I'm gonna have to more you. of those though <laughs> it's not on my bucket list and it never ever will be I can tell that now <laughs> alright let's go back to what we are talking about <laughs> which was managing, talking about? managing oh yeah virtual but... <laughs> assistant managing right yeah and you're talking about so, writing an article of skydiving <laughs> okay so that I think you know it goes back to, to, to the first thing is that number one don't overload your VA with mm. tasks you know, give them a task, let them complete the task. Give them another task, let them complete the task. It's the best way to do it. It's honestly the best way to do it. There might be from time to time where you need a couple of things done, and as long as they're manageable, um, then that's okay. Yeah. The other thing is that when you delegate a task, make sure you put a decent timeline or a target for, it, for its completion in place as well. If you feel a task is going to take six hours to complete, give the VA six hours. Don't force them to do it in half the time because you're the boss. There's just no point in doing that. Mm. Give them the six hours, let them complete the task, and then you'll be happy with the results. If you try and rush them, chances are you won't be happy with the results. So that's that's part of the management side of things. Actually, the before you go, is, sorry to interrupt there, Chris. When you say give, give a virtual staff or virtual assistant six hours, but you don't know how long the task is, how do you also determine that too? Well, because you have to think about, right, if I was going to do this myself, how long mm. would it take? Now, why would it be different for anyone else? True. But I'm but just saying, know, say, for example, it's a new task that you have not done before, but you decide ah, okay. you want to delegate it somewhere else, expecting well, that they know how to do it. How would we know? That's, that's where I struggle as well, actually. Sure. Well, it's a guesstimate, isn't it? It's a guesstimate yeah. is what it is. And I think that you know, based on similar tasks that you might have done or your VA might have done in the past, you can kind of guess it around that. You know, yeah, uh, but that's, that's really, well, I mean, if it really is a first time task, that's another management thing right there is that you can't expect it to be done perfectly, no, number one, the first time around, and B, within a timely fashion, because the chances are that the VA is learning how to do that, that particular task on their feet at the same time. So, you know, it's, it's, a, little, it's a little hard because of that. But I, I think you'll find that, you know, following those two rules, one task at a time, realistic timelines in place and targets in place for that task, couple that together with some kind of management system like Basecamp or Huddle or something along those lines, which are fundamentally the same things. Mm. Now, I've used those before in the past. I don't use them now. And I think that a lot of virtual bosses could probably do the exact same thing. I know a lot of people just swear by Basecamp, for example. Mm. They just love it. It is what it is. And I can see the benefits behind that. They keeps your inbox relatively clean because you're not going to be getting a load of emails. Um, is There's a portal, and obviously they all have mobile apps nowadays. You can check it out when you're on the go with your iPhone mm. or your iPad or whatever as well. There's a lot of pros to that. Um, and I'm sure there's a certain number of cons. But it always comes down to personal preference. And for me now... You want to know what my really high tech system is for managing my VAs on a on a day to day basis? I, I can it's probably guess email. Super high tech. It's and it's not even multiple emails. It's one, one email a day, and it's right at the end of their working day. They drop me an email. Hi, boss. Here's what I did today. And then there's a bullet point of list of maybe 
much. You know, one day, maybe no more than five things they've done. Boom, 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 boom. Thanks very much. Let me know if you've got any questions. Regards, boom, boom. That's pretty much exactly what I do as well too, <laughs> what we call the daily accountability. So. <laughs> but bear in mind, Tyrone, that you and I have been doing this for a while, yeah. where a lot of newbies might be coming into this with that kind of VA virgin mentality and not really knowing what to do. They might need that security blanket of a project management system in place for a couple of months for them to get used to delegating tasks and getting feedback and things like that. Which is but the reason that- why I'm asking you from experience. It's very important because we can all learn from this. I mean, I'm learning from you. You're right. learning from me. They're learning from you as well. And if email works, then it works. If it doesn't, then try a project management system. There's right. always different ways on how people work and everybody's all wired differently as you know. So, you know, the advice you've given is, is great tips. You know, I, 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 simple. That's the thing. I like simplistic, minimalistic feel. And that's across everything that I'm doing now. So. Absolutely. And the good thing about that system is it allows me right at the end of my day, like I was about to say, which is usually around 1 a.m. my time because mm. I have clients over in the U.S. that so I need to work with as well. So, the, you know, my VAs are long gone into la-la land. You know, at that point, they're, they're sleeping beauties are uh, well away so at, at, at one at 1 a.m i reply to that email and what i do is I actually reply right next to the bullet point Excellent. and they know that if there's nothing next to that bullet point i'm fine i'm happy no problems but if there's a note i might ask them to tweak something or i might ask them to uh, you know completely delete something on a website or present something to me in this regard or that mm. regard so it really, um, for me, it's just a, I mean, literally, you know how long it takes me to manage my, my three VAs every day? 15 minutes, five minutes. It's, yeah, it shouldn't take yeah. you more than that. To write an email is probably five minutes each max. It's yeah. very easy. And I mean, if you need to make any changes, this is, this is the one step I guess I, I add on to the emails because my VAs also do send me an email at the end of every day. And as Chris has mentioned, the task they've done, then I've got a section for them to leave some feedback how we can improve our systems if there are any. And then furthermore, uh, any other specific questions that they want to ask me. So, sort of three sections there. Most of the time, they fill in the first two. The last one, you know, they're sort of self-explanatory because we do answer those through during the core of an email or so forth. So, that's excellent. All right. Well, Chris, before we do wrap up, I usually like to ask my guests or people who come onto the Outsourcing Life podcast this final question, which is currently, what is currently working for you with your virtual team that you can part on? as a practical tip for others? Hmm, good question. Uh, well, above and beyond everything else that I've spoken about. Yeah, I mean, I maybe just one final tip that is really straight to the point and something that can help them take practical action when they're starting out. Sure. It's very, very easy. And it's so easy that uh, it's an aha moment for a lot of people. Good. And that is don't micromanage. Good. I like that very much. That's it. Because here's the reason why <clears throat> I think it's stupid to micromanage, plain and simple. <laughs> First, I, this, this always makes me laugh because it's so obvious, but people are like, oh, yeah. You know, when you say it to them, here's the first thing. First and foremost, it completely defeats the object of the game. Mm. You're outsourcing to leverage more time so you can do other more important things. But if you're micromanaging your virtual assistant or, God forbid, you have a team of virtual Mm. assistants and you're micromanaging all of them, where's that extra time gone? It's gone back into managing your VAs. So micromanaging is completely defeating the object of the entire outsourcing strategy as far as I'm concerned. The other thing is this, and I know this from very solid experience myself in the past, nobody likes and respects and enjoys working for a micromanaging a-hole. It doesn't happen, ever. <laughs> and I worked for a guy that was such a bad micromanager. God's honest truth. He used to make me BCC him into every single email that I sent clients because he was just so transfixed with the idea of wanting to be in the loop on everything. I mean, just imagine the amount of e- And he had a whole bunch of people working for him. Imagine the amount of emails he had to read every single day. Insane. Madman, absolute madman. <laughs> and I absolutely, I, I respected him for the man that he was in regards to giving me money every month to live on. But everything else, forget about it. I couldn't care less about the guy. 
So that's really my number one tip is to just not micromanage your staff because ultimately in the long run, it ain't going to lead. It's just not going to lead to pretty, pretty endings yeah, at all. Well, actually, I, I probably wanted to add to that. For people who don't really know what the term micromanage is, it's just basically don't be on the back of your virtual assistant every minute of the day telling them exactly how to do that, what to do and so forth. So I know that people try to track the times on their, their times on what they do, what they're doing exactly. Don't do that. <laughs> I used to say that to people. You can insert it, but use it only for reporting and managing purposes. Don't use it to just be on their back. Simple as that. And the other, yeah, and the other thing is, you know, there's other software that takes a snapshot and yeah. emails it to you and you all this sort of stuff. Completely not a waste of time. And the other thing is this. I guarantee you. Your employee is absolutely going to be updating their Facebook status in the middle of the working day. Guarantee yeah. that. Yep. You don't need a screenshot to know that. You know they're going to do it. But ultimately, it comes down to one thing. Are they... If they're productive and they're giving you what you're paying them for and the tasks are done properly, productively, in a timely fashion, who cares what they're doing at the other time during the day? I don't. As exactly. long as the work gets done, I don't care. Totally agree. Totally agree. That's awesome, Chris. Well, firstly... I want to thank you so much for coming on to the call today and what I'm going to do is for people who want to get in contact with Chris and find out more about the virtual staff finder service, you can go and visit his website. I'll actually give you an affiliate link here so I'm just going to disclose this. It's getsvirtualstaffinder.com and what I'll do is I'll put that link down below here as well. So, if you want to find out more about that, either I guess go through his service which is something we talked about today. I'm not going to say to you that you need to go there but if you are struggling and you need some help with finding the right t a team member, virtual assistant, web developer, whatever you need, definitely check it out and have a look at that and then from there, he'll be able to look after you which I'm pretty sure you will, Chris, when, <laughs> while we're talking right now. I will. I will do indeed. <laughs> you, and, swear, and you swear you will. <laughs> hand, on, hand on heart. Um, I, uh, the other thing, I also have an additional uh, blog and podcast sure. which has yep. just literally gone live, which, which is outsourcetothephilippines.com. It's 100% focused on nothing but outsourcing tips and tactics towards the Philippines and working with Filipinos and things like that. Um, it's brand new. It just, it just literally kicked off a little while back. So if you guys are interested over there, and they can find me off emails, chris at outsourcetothephilippines.com. I'd be more than happy to hear from anyone. Excellent. Yeah, definitely check it out. I know that podcast that uh, was originally from from Dan, Dan from Lifestyle Business Podcast and you yep. took it over from there because he left the Philippines. I know that there's quality information so guys, go and check it out and uh, add that to your list of learning how to outsource as well. So, thank you so much again, Chris, for coming on to the call today and sharing your information about virtual staff and hiring and so forth and managing staff again. It was my absolute pleasure. It was good to chat with you. Likewise. This is Outsourcing Lives Inside, Inside Info. Info. All right, inside this tip that I want to share with you is an amazing tool that has been used by hundreds and thousands of people all around the world. Even Tim Ferriss from the 4-Hour four four hour Workweek recommends this tool. And this tool I've been using for quite some time personally with myself and also with my team. You might be wondering, what's it called? All right, let me tell you what it is. It's called Rescue Time and Rescue Time is a, a really, really powerful tool which you can get access to. I'll just give you the link. It's at outsourcinglive.com forward slash rescue time and it'll take you directly to the page there. Basically, it's been recommended by people from CNBC, Lifehacker, US News, The New York Times, etc. You may or may not have heard of it but what it does is that all you have to do is install a little tool or little tracking device on your computer and it literally tracks everything that you do. And then what it does is also to sees which screens you're browsing on, what applications you're opening and it'll track how long you've been spending on them. Then what it'll do is record that onto their system and from there it'll categorize into the certain activities. And say for example, if you're to categorize your dollar productive activities such as either web development if you're a web development company or if you're writing out emails to say for example your database or creating content those are say for example dollar productive activities then rescue time will categorize in that way but if you're hopping on and doing facebook and twittering and socializing and things that are not related to your business you can actually set those things as being non-dollar productive and the great thing is at the end of the week, Rescue Time will send you a little report saying how productive you are comparison to pretty much a 
baseline of other people who are on rescue time as well. And it'll give you sort of like a little percentage that says this is your productivity of the week and also in comparison to others. Lots of people are using it and personally, I think it's a great tool for that because it's important to know exactly what you're getting up to while you're online or while you're working as well. And I definitely highly recommend check it out and install it to use it for yourself just to track for at least a week to see what you're currently up to as well. All right, once again, the link to this is rescue time. So, it's outsourcinglive.com forward slash rescue time spelled R-E-S-C-U-E-T-I-M-E. All right, so check it out there and I'll make sure I put the link down on the show notes as well so that you can get access to it and also to let me know what you think in the comments as well. Discover more resources to grow your business inside Mass Outsource Mastermind. Watch the video tutorials and follow the easy instructions to take your business to the next level. Start your 30-day no-risk trial membership at freevideoset.com. That's freevideoset.com. This has been Outsourcing Live with Tyrone Shum. Outsourcing the hard stuff so you can focus on the fun stuff.